Guild Wars 2 is a massive game with a lot of stuff going on. Many new and returning players are often overwhelmed by the wide variety of different things that you can do, and today I want to give an overview of the entire game. I'm going to go over the basics of different pieces of content and different gameplay elements while providing links to resources for you to learn more about each thing. There's a lot of stuff going on in this video, so if a specific topic interests you, check out the table of contents down in the description. Let's get started. Guild Wars 2 takes place in a massive open world known as Tyria. While there are certain areas that are outside of the open world, like instance dungeons or player versus player arenas, a lot of time spent in this game is going to be around other people. And while you are able to select a server, this doesn't really have too much of an impact on you. Where the more important selection is the region you want to play on, depending on where you live in the world, either the North America or the Europe regions will be better for you when it comes to latency. Guild Wars 2 has a wide variety of community-based features to help support the fact that this is an open-world game with a large number of players, including but not limited to guild support for larger communities, maps and say chats for players in the same area, a trading post where players can trade items for gold with each other, a friends list, and a looking for group bulletin board. But before you can get started in Guild Wars 2 and start interacting with other players, you need to create a character. As you go through the character creation process, you have a wide variety of different choices for how you want to customize your character. Ultimately, none of these choices have a major impact on gameplay, while there are a few unique skills for each race, each of those skills are intentionally tuned to not be that good, so they mostly add some flavor to open world content and won't be the determining factor on whether or not you top any DPS charts. The five different playable races you can pick are Humans, Char, Norn, Sura, and Savari. Each of these five races have a different starting story, different customization options, and start in a different area of the world. But no matter which one you choose, you can instantly teleport to any of the other races' starting zones, though you can't do the other races' starting story. From there, you can choose one of nine different professions, commonly known as classes in other games, with the Revenant profession being locked for players who don't own one of the first three expansions. Your choice of profession has a major impact on your experience in the game, as each profession has different abilities, passive traits, and gameplay options compared to other professions. Furthermore, each profession can specialize further into one of three different elite specializations, which are basically subclasses that change the gameplay of each profession. If you want to learn more about each profession and elite specialization, I highly recommend this guide that you can find down in the description. If you want a one sentence recommendation for what I personally think you should play, here you go. If you are new to the game or new to MMOs in general, I recommend playing Guardian, Ranger, or Necromancer. If you are looking for a profession that is more complex and difficult, I recommend Mesmer, Elementalist, and Engineer. Or if you are looking for something in the middle, I recommend Thief, Warrior, or Revenant. Once you have a race and profession picked out, you can start customizing the rest of your character, where you have a ton of different customization options that you can choose from, but these are just the base options and you can unlock more with special customization kits you can earn in-game or buy on the gem store with real world money or in-game gold. Additionally, you have a selection of dyes that you can choose from to dye your character's armor, and this selection is massively expanded upon as you play the game and unlock a wide variety of different dyes. Once you have your character how you want it, you can start selecting a few different background options. Ultimately, none of these are super important and it is more about the personal story that you want to tell with your character. You can select a profession specific option, you can select a personality trait, then you can select three different race specific options. These three options will change what story is being told at the beginning of your story experience or slight details of that experience which does impact your personal gameplay experience slightly but you will still be progressing through the game in the same way as everyone else, no matter which story you pick. And once you've created your character how you want it, and picked out a name, you can enter the world of Tyria. I just mentioned the story a lot, didn't I? Well, the story of Guild Wars 2 is one of the biggest and most important parts of the game. When you first load into the world on a new character, you are put straight into your first story mission, which acts as the start of the tutorial experience. As you progress through the story mission and complete it, you can begin exploring the world of Tyria however you want it. We shall get more into that in a moment, but Guild Wars 2's story begins with the personal story, where every 10 levels you will unlock a chapter of the personal story to play through, such as chapter 1 at level 10 or chapter 5 at level 50, all the way up to chapter 8 at level 80. Each chapter has a few different missions to play through, stories to experience, characters to meet, and options to make. 
And as you complete the personal story and complete the base campaign, you can begin moving forward into the story of Tyria that has evolved over the last decade or so. For almost every single major content patch in Guild Wars 2 has introduced new story, so there is a lot to catch up on if you are into experiencing a game's story. Where all of the story after the personal story is incredibly linear, and you follow nearly the same exact story as everyone else around you, and because there is a lot of story and different means to tell that story, it can get pretty confusing but you can find the story journal in the hero panel which shows a chronological order of the game's entire story and by using this you can follow along with the story. Most of which you will have to pay for in order to play. Playing through the story will allow you to explore brand new zones, unlock unique rewards, and learn more about the world you are in. An important aspect of Guild Wars 2's gameplay is the combat and the different skills and builds you can have. With 9 different professions and 27 different elite specializations, many different types of weapons, a wide variety of different skills, and many different passive traits, there is a lot to choose from. But with almost everything you do in this game, you will be engaging in combat. As you approach different areas of gameplay, having a certain build is important. This is your combination of stats, weapons, armor, abilities, and so on that come together to create a unique gameplay experience and to slot yourself into a team. When we look at the general open world, honestly, anything goes. Have some fun experimenting with the game, try new weapons to see what abilities they have, pick traits that sound fun to you, but if you are ever wanting to take the game more seriously, and if you don't want to do a lot of practice, experimentation, and build crafting, I will share the link to a few different websites that offer good builds for different areas of the game down in the description. Aside from your build, there are a ton of different aspects to combat that you will slowly learn as you progress through the game. Movement, dodging, stuns, break bars, conditions, boons, and so many other important things. If you want to learn more about the various aspects of combat in Guild Wars 2, I highly recommend that you check out my overview of combat video, link down in the description. Guild Wars 2 has three pillars of gameplay, PvE, PvP, and World vs. World. The last two are both competitive game modes where you can fight other players and are less supported compared to PvE. For the vast majority of content, such as all of the story, is PvE content, and Guild Wars 2's open world content is the biggest part of the entire game. As you reach each map through the story or via other means such as a special item that will allow you to teleport to other players in your party, you can begin exploring each map. You can find tasks that are similar to traditional quests but you can choose how to complete each task in an area. There are special points of interest that mark cool locations and beautiful sites. There are a certain waypoints that serve as checkpoints for you to return to should you die or want to return to a specific location. There are hero challenges that you can overcome in order to gain hero points to unlock new skills and traits. There are small events that you can participate in with other players to help different characters or defeat dangerous foes. There are larger meta events that lead to map-wide changes and massive world boss battles. There are a ton of secret, hidden areas that you can discover which may hold something beautiful or a unique reward. There are a lot of different things to do that will interest different players. If you want to learn more about the open world as a whole, I highly recommend checking out my overview of the open world video, link down in the description. A fun aspect of Guild Wars 2 are the recurring festivals. While there are some annual events that happen almost every year, such as April Fool's Day, there are six unique festivals that occur approximately two months apart from each other every year. Each festival has special minigames you can play, achievements you can earn, and rewards you can unlock. Lunar New Year, around late January to early February, celebrates the Canthan New Year with celestial-themed activities. Super Adventure Box, around late March to mid-April, is a massive game inside of a game that focuses on the idea of jumping puzzles and exploration. Dragon Bash, around early to late June, celebrates the art of dragon slaying with a ton of dragon-themed activities. Festival of the Four Winds, around late July to early August, is a two-in-one festival where you can fight powerful enemies or explore special, beautiful areas with a ton of stuff to unlock. Shadow of the Mad King, around mid-October to early November, is a Halloween-themed festival where you must overcome the challenges of Mad King Thorn. And Winter's Day, around mid-December to early January, is a Christmas and New Year-themed festival with a wide variety of different festive-themed minigames and rewards. If you want to take a deep dive into any of these festivals, I highly recommend Mukluk's Get to the Point guides, link down in the description. A big part of many MMOs are the gathering and crafting systems. Every single player can gather every single type of material in Guild Wars 2, and there are four different types of gathering. Harvesting, logging, mining, and fishing. 
Fishing is less important and is unlocked as a part of the End of Dragons expansion, but everyone else can do the first three and are important to do for anyone who wants to make some gold or gather materials to craft with. All across the world of Tyria you can find plants to harvest, logs to log, and ore to mine. You must go to a general merchant to unlock the proper harvesting tools, such as an axe, in order to chop down trees, and you must have a high enough level depending on what area of the world you are in. As you gather these materials and various other materials from mob drops, such as cloth or the blood of your enemies, you can begin crafting. There are nine different crafting disciplines. One is scribing, which is the discipline most players will not be interacting with because it is for making decorations for guild halls and is also locked behind the Heart of Thorns expansion. And the other eight are as follows. Artificers who can make foci, staves, scepters, tridents, and potions. Huntsmen who can make short bows, long bows, pistols, rifles, harpoon guns, torches, and war horns. Weaponsmiths who can make axes, daggers, swords, greatswords, maces, hammers, spears, and shields. Jewelers who can make amulets, rings, and earrings. Leatherworkers who can make armor for engineers, rangers, and thieves. Tailors who can make armor for elementalists, mesmers, and necromancers. Armorsmiths who can make heavy armor for guardians, warriors, and revenants. And finally, chefs who can make food and armor dyes. If you want to learn more about crafting, I recommend that you check out Muckluck's crafting guide, link down in the description. Almost everything you do in Guild Wars 2 will grant you experience. Slay a monster, gain some experience. Explore a new area, gain some experience. Complete a story step, gain some experience, and so on and so forth. As you begin your journeys on a new character, you will start at level 1 and have a relatively quick journey to the maximum level of level 80. The level 1 to 80 experience basically serves as the start of the game to help ease you into the world of Tyria and teach you different things. If you are new to the game, I highly recommend that you participate in this journey instead of skipping ahead with an instant level 80 boost. But once you reach level 80, experience still matters because you unlock the mastery system. Depending on which expansion you own, you can earn experience and mastery points in each expansion's maps to unlock special systems across your entire account. There are a lot, such as fishing with the End of Dragons expansion, or gliding with the Heart of Thorns expansion, or personal player housing that you can own and decorate with the Janthir Wilds expansion. But the most famous of them all has to be the various mounts you can unlock. Starting with the Path of Fire expansion and into future expansions, you can unlock a wide variety of different gameplay changing mounts that are incredible to use. If you want to learn more about a few of these masteries, such as mounts, I'll throw some links to a few of my videos highlighting them down in the description. But even if you unlock every mastery in the game, which will take some time, experience still matters as you can gain spirit shards via experience, which is an important currency for high level crafting. While Guild Wars 2 has a ton of open world content, there is also a lot of instance content for people who prefer difficult boss fights that you must overcome with a small group in order to defeat. There are a few different specific examples of instance content we can look at, but I'll specifically highlight the four most relevant. First is dungeons. For anyone who has played any other MMOs like World of Warcraft, the concept of dungeons are probably familiar. You delve into a cave, assault a stronghold, or run an investigation inside of a politician's manor following a story, defeating a variety of trash mobs, and defeating a variety of bosses. These are eight different pieces of five player content. Most have a story mode version that is super easy to complete, and upon completing the story mode version or joining a group with somebody else who has, you can play through the explorable mode version of the dungeon that has a variety of different and more difficult dungeon paths. Essentially unique dungeons in and of themselves through each individual larger dungeon, where dungeons are the original in-game content in Guild Wars 2 and nowadays are relatively easy, where many players will engage with the story modes as they begin playing the game and will begin farming exploration modes of each dungeon to unlock special rewards. Second is Fractals of the Mist. These are very similar to dungeons but can be entered at a single location and the primary form of 5 player content in Guild Wars 2 are more difficult and are more rewarding. Where there are a wide variety of fractals, basically the same thing as a dungeon path, that are ever expanding as Guild Wars 2 keeps getting updates. Each fractal has its own challenges and obstacles that a group must overcome in order to complete the fractal. Additionally, there are four different tiers to fractals where each tier is higher in difficulty but more rewarding than the previous, where you must unlock the highest level of armor in the game via crafting or other means, as well as special agony infusion upgrades for that armor in order to survive the higher tiers. If you want to take a deeper dive into Fractals in the Mist and the gear and requirements for them, 
I recommend checking out Mukluk's Intro to Fractals guide, link down in the description. Third, we have raids. Similar to how dungeons are similar to traditional dungeons in other games, raids are similar to traditional raids in other games. These are a variety of different wings of bosses where you experience a story, kill some trash, and fight super difficult bosses that have a wide variety of different mechanics, but unlike dungeons or fractals of the mist, you are doing this with a total of 10 players instead of just 5. There are a bunch of different raid wings in the game, and if you are interested in learning more about them, I highly recommend Mukluk's video guides or Snow Curl's written guides, links down in the description. And fourth are strike missions. While fractals are pretty similar to dungeons, strike missions are pretty similar to raids. These are pieces of 10 player instance content where you fight some of the most difficult enemies in the entire game. There are two key differences between strikes and raids. The first is how strikes are the evolution of story bosses. So while you may fight one boss in the story by yourself, in a strike mission you would be fighting a version of that boss who is significantly more difficult and requires you to have a full team of 10 by your side. The second key difference is how strike missions are only one boss. While on raids you will have 3-4 to four bosses, and in order to kill the third boss, you have to kill the first and second, but in strikes, the entirety of the instance is just that one boss, so you can get in and start fighting that boss immediately. Similar to raids, there are a ton of different strikes in the game, and if you are interested in learning more about them, I highly recommend Mukluk's video guides or Snowcrow's written guides, links down in the description. There is a ton of stuff in PvE. There are even more types of instance content than what I talked about, such as convergences, which are basically instance meta events, as well as dragon response missions, which are basically just weird dungeons. But everything that I have talked about thus far should be everything that you need to know about the different pieces of PvE content in the game, and if you want to learn more about any of them, you should check out the resources I mention in each section or start exploring them by yourself. There are a ton of different raid fights, a ton of different maps to explore, a ton of different jumping puzzles to complete, and so much more. But if PvE content is not something you enjoy, let's talk about the two other pillars of Guild Wars 2, PvP and Road vs. Road. I want to reiterate that PvE is definitely the biggest pillar of Guild Wars 2 that is focused on the most, gets the most support, and gets the most content updates. As such, PvP and WVW are considered by many to be in a rougher spot, where the two game modes are fully functional, but the amount of people playing them is significantly less compared to PvE. Additionally, the communities found within those two game modes, more so in PvP, are pretty different compared to PvE, where every online community has a fair amount of toxic people, and Guild Wars 2 is no exception. If you spend a lot of time playing PvE, you will likely come across some not great people. But across all of gaming, Guild Wars 2 is generally considered to have one of the best and most supportive communities in all of gaming, and when people say that, let's just say they aren't talking about people in PvP. So if you're someone who doesn't enjoy toxicity, discrimination, or people who play competitive games but actively work to sabotage their team because they are mad about something, then you should probably stick to PvE. But all of that aside, let's dive in, where PvP, also known as Structured Player vs. Player, or SPVP, is your structured PvP mode in Guild Wars 2. You can head to the PvP lobby known as the Heart of the Mists, create or copy a build for your character, and queue up for a game. Upon a game being ready, you will be hit by a map vote where you and 9 other people joining the same match as you can vote for one of 3 randomly selected maps where the game will then pick a map depending on how many votes each map got. If a map got 100% of the votes, then that map will be picked. If one map got 30% of the votes, one map got 70% of the votes, and the other got 0%, there is a respective percentage chance for each of those maps to be picked. Once you join a map, there is a short warm up period and then the game begins. Two teams of five players will battle across the map, earning points by killing enemies and by controlling the three different control points around the map. Once a team has earned enough points by any combination of kills or time spent controlling points, aka gets to 500 points, or has one more point than the other team above 500 points, then that team will win. While every single map has players to kill and three different control points to control, each map has a gimmick that changes the gameplay of the respective map. To highlight a few, in the forest of Niffle Hill, there are two different neutral bosses that a team can kill to earn bonus points, where the team that gets the final hit on the boss will be rewarded for the kill, creating a gameplay element similar to killing monsters or creeps in a MOBA game. In Spirit Watch, an orb will periodically spawn in the center of the map that teams can battle over to carry back to one of their bases for bonus points, similar to capture the flag, but both teams are contesting the same flag. And a more simple one is the Temple of the Silent Storm, where there are two different meditations that will spawn in select spots across the map. If a player on the team is able to channel that meditation without being interrupted, their team will receive a bonus. 
The meditation on stillness will instantly give your team three points and will double the amount of points you get from controlled capture points for a short time. And the meditation on tranquility will instantly capture all three capture points on the map for your team. Now everything I have said so far is for unrated conquest. Her conquest is the name of the game mode that I just described with two teams of five battling over three control points on maps with the various gimmicks. But there's also a rated version of this game where you can earn or lose rating by winning or losing games while also getting additional rewards. Alongside that, there's also Stronghold, which is a different type of PvP game mode compared to Conquest, where it is still 5v5, but it is a mobile-like game mode. Instead of fighting over three control points, each team has a base with a boss inside of it. Alongside that, there are two lanes, where each team is actively trying to push down one lane while defending the other lane from the opposing team. By killing the enemy, spawning allied mobs, and by killing enemy mobs, you can push into the enemy team's base and kill their boss to win. Additionally, there are periodically shorter ranked deathmatch seasons that will happen in between normal ranked seasons. These are 2v2 and 3v3 game modes that take place on special, smaller maps where the aim of the game is to kill the enemy team. If every enemy dies and you still have one ally alive, your team wins the round. Additionally, we see a beta version of Push which is similar to the Push game mode in other games where each team is trying to push an objective to the enemy's base. And finally, there are custom arenas, where you buy, via a lot of gold, permanent servers that you can customize the settings of. You can also browse the server list to join other people's servers if they are open to the public. Ultimately, this is a pretty underused feature and you won't find many people interacting with it, but it is still a fun feature in the game. The two most common types of servers you will find are daily servers, where people are working together to complete PvP dailies very quickly, as well as 1v1 dueling servers where you can find people to fight one-on-one. -on -one. But if you are playing with a ton of friends, you could play on a custom server with a very specific rule sets to come up with some fun game ideas. If you are interested in learning more about PvP beyond this brief overview I just gave, I highly recommend that you check out Muckluck's PvP guide, link in the description. But PvP is only one of the two competitive game types in the game, where the other is World vs World. Similar to PvP, you can fight other players across different maps, but these maps are absolutely massive and feature a ton of different objectives and many, many more players. Whenever you want to play with WVW, you can just click on the Road vs. Road button and choose a map to join. You are automatically assigned to an auto-generated team with different players, where you can search for guilds in game or on various websites in order to join a specific group of players to be able to play WVW with them. There are a total of three teams, red, blue, and green. Each of these three teams are playing against each other, which can lead to some pretty crazy fights. World vs. World is incredibly open-ended with many different things you can do, but the two biggest ideas are fighting other players and taking objectives. Where there are some pretty simple objectives that you can take, such as supply camps which can be taken by yourself if you are good enough, but bigger objectives such as keeps will require more players, especially if the team that owns the keep wishes to keep it for themselves. As your team kills players and controls objectives, you earn points for your world, and the team with the most points at the end of the week wins and a new match begins. Where a team winning doesn't mean too much other than bragging rights, but if you are playing when your team is controlling more objectives than the other teams, you will earn a higher quantity of rewards on top of your normally earned rewards. Where there are a lot more intricacies to Road vs. Road than what I have said here, so if you're interested in learning more about this game type, I highly recommend checking out Muckluck's guide on Road vs. Road that you can find down in the description with the recognition that this guide was created prior to the Road restructuring update, so servers no longer matter and you're just automatically put into teams. Throughout this video, I have talked about rewards, where there are a lot of rewards that you can earn in Guild Wars 2, and it would be impossible to describe all of them in a short amount of time. With Guild Wars 2 being a game that doesn't have a lot of vertical progression, there isn't a tall ladder that you need to climb in order to gear up. However, there are still long-term gearing objectives you can work towards in the form of legendary gear, where basically these are weapons, pieces of armor, and whatnot, that have the same stats as Ascended Gear, where Ascended Gear is relatively easy to get, but still a bit of a commitment to work towards. But Legendary Gear oftentimes just looks super cool, but also have incredible quality of life features in that you can make them look like any other skin you have unlocked on your account free of charge, while also allowing you to change the stats to whatever you want free of charge. Changing the stats of gear allows you to change what build you are using and how you play the game. Oh, and it is unlocked for your entire account. So once you unlock a legendary heavy chest plate, you never need to worry about getting any other heavy chest plate again. Where you may have heard me mention skins, where skins are the looks of the different weapons and armor in the game. 
where many players love to unlock a wide variety of different skins so that they can customize their character in a variety of different ways. On top of all of that, there are different miniature pets, shape-changing tonics, and many, many other things you can unlock throughout the game. Most activities in Guild Wars 2, open world exploration, instance PvE, PvP, and WVW will all grant you a variety of different rewards. You just have to go out and get them. With Guild Wars 2 being such a massive game, most players struggle with figuring out how to approach the game and get started, or hopefully this section will help you figure out how to get started. The biggest question you have to ask yourself is what exactly you are getting into Guild Wars 2 for. Do you want to play the story? Then you should probably focus on leveling up and completing the story linearly. Are you looking for a 5v5 PvP game that you can play for hours on end? Well, you probably shouldn't be playing an MMO, but you can start playing SPvP once you reach level 2. Depending on what you want to do, you should focus on learning how to do that and engaging with that. But a recommendation that I have for the average player is that when you start playing the game, you should focus on leveling up your character, learning what the different things your profession can do, exploring the world, and completing the story. This should allow you to get a pretty good grasp on Guild Wars 2 while learning a variety of different things. Completing the story and reaching new zones will allow you to engage with those new areas while unlocking specific areas that may be important in the future, such as meta events that players like to do to earn gold. From here, you can start exploring different things like PvP, WVW, build crafting, dungeons, fractals, and so on and so forth as you learn what types of things you want to do. Then from there, just engage with what you enjoy and don't engage with what you don't enjoy. A big aspect of Guild Wars 2 that helps guide you through the game are achievements. And if you feel nervous whenever you look at the achievement page, you should because it's daunting and doesn't have the best UI. But almost every single thing that you do in the game has achievements. Want to complete a raid? There are achievements for that. Want to progress through the story? Achievements. Want to make legendary armor? You guessed it. Achievements. So figuring out how to navigate the achievement page and setting your own goals for you are important. On top of all that, there's a lot of content in the game that are exclusive to achievements where there are a variety of adventures that you can partake on similar to traditional quests that you can do once you start following along with them in your achievements page. One aspect of Guild Wars 2 that is important to some players are add-ons. This is a popular idea in many different games, but what exactly are they? They are basically software modules that allow you to modify, customize, or enhance your Guild Wars 2 experience. They can be tools that allow you to know more information, such as how much DPS you and your party are doing, how much FPS you are getting in the game without having to open your options menu, how fast you are moving, when raid bosses are doing mechanics, and so on. They can also provide some in-game functionality to you, such as a stopwatch to track time, a notepad to write down notes, a way to log into other characters without going back to the character selection screen, and so on. But a lot of players have concerns about the legality of having add-ons, as in whether or not they will get banned if they use an add-on. In short, you shouldn't have to worry about that for the more popular add-ons. And to quote ArenaNet, the developers of Guild Wars 2 directly, we do not permit the use of any program that gives one player an unintended unnatural, or unfair advantage over another player. This includes programs that alter game balance in favor of one player over another, automate actions within the game, promote unattended gameplay, or have an adverse effect on other players. You're basically, as long as the add-on you're using doesn't do any of those things they list, you're good to go. But ArenaNet does state that, while in general, we will not take action on an account for the use of such a utility program or modification, action is subject to ArenaNet's discretion use any third-party program at your own risk. You can find a link to the full ArenaNet policy article on third-party programs down in the description. Where there are a variety of different add-ons for Guild Wars 2, but the two most common are ArcDPS, which is a damage and other stats meter important for high-end PvE, as well as Blishhud, which is an overlay add-on important for many, many different areas of Guild Wars 2. If you want to check out either of these add-ons, links to their respective websites are down in the description. With Guild Wars 2 being such a large game, and with this being a game that a lot of people play, there are a ton of community resources available to you. As I've been going through this video, I have been mentioning various relevant resources, but I will add an additional list at the bottom of the description for the additional resources, alongside a brief description for different websites and content creators that may be helpful to you for different things in the game. A common trend you probably noticed throughout this video is the YouTuber Muckluck. Her Muckluck has a wide variety of different guides that I highly recommend because I enjoy his content and they are good guides. Plus, to my knowledge, he isn't racist, which is refreshing. I myself also have a variety of different video and text guides that you can find linked down in the description. I also have some pseudo guides, which are from my top 10 of Guild Wars 2 series, such as my top 10 gold farms video, which is just going over what my personal favorite gold farms in the game 
alongside some tips for gold farming. I also have my entire Let's Play series, which is basically one big guide where I have some more intricate guides sprinkled throughout. But if you are looking for more Guild Receipt guides from me, this is my last major one that I am creating. Though I will probably have some more of those pseudo guides in the form of top 10 lists and my Let's Play series in the future. Guild Wars 2 is a large and complex game with many things to learn, and a lot of people are often confused about the basic foundations of the game as well as the smaller intricacies, and rightfully so, there is a lot to learn. But the most important thing when it comes to Guild Wars 2, and I mean this genuinely, is do whatever is fun for you. If you like sitting back and exploring the world, do that. If you enjoy optimizing your build and pushing to be the best DPS player in a squad, do that. Just don't belittle people for having fun in their own way because Guild Wars 2's community is incredibly diverse with a lot of different players and nobody likes a toxic loser. Hopefully this guide helped you with understanding the basics of what Guild Wars 2 is as well as the variety of different things you can do in the game. On top of all that, I hope this guide helped point you in the direction of learning more about the game. If you view me as a credible source, feel free to ask me any question about Guild Wars 2 that you have and hopefully other people can help you out as well and give you their own perspectives as well. There is a lot of stuff about the game that I didn't cover since this is simply a broad overview. I hope you all are taking good care of yourselves. Have a good one everyone.